Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. Have you ever felt sick and wondered what's wrong? Of course you have. Now, most folks go to a doctor instead of just wondering. But once in a while, we run across someone who has a continuous ailment, and that person refuses to see the doc. I know you think that's rather foolish, but it happens nevertheless. Now, the problem is how to convince people like this that they need a doctor's help. And sometimes that can be a pretty big order. I had a ranger who gave me this problem... I had to get real rough on him to make him see common sense. I'd like to call this story The Big Headache. Wrench away, Henry. You hurt bad? No, I, I don't think so, Gray Wolf. That's good news. What's the matter with your ears, Sonny? You almost got driven into the ground by this tree. Yeah. Didn't you hear Bill call out? Uh, I, I sort of heard him. What do you mean you sort of heard me? Brad, don't you care if you live or die? Not when I got one of my headaches. I thought they went away. That's what you told me some time ago. <sighs> they did for a while. Now they're back again. Migraine? Yeah. The worst kind. Right now, I wish my head belonged to anybody but me. It feels like a thousand air hammers pounding away inside my skull. Well, why don't you stop being stubborn and go see the doc? <laughs> Are you kidding? Me? Go see the doc? <laughs> He laughed me out of his office. I'm an outdoor man, a tough ranger. Never been sick a day in my life. <laughs> and you want me to go see the doc? What do you take me for, a fool? I sure do. If you won't go see the doc, anybody with an ounce of brains would do that. Why, you old walrus, I ought to... You ain't going to do nothing. Leastways, not until that headache clears up. You know I'm telling the truth, besides. You know, Stumpy's right, Brad. Why don't you go see the doc? He can help you or at least tell you where to get help. Boy, I had a headache once for five hours. I can appreciate how you feel. They're miserable. They make you feel sick all over. Uh, Henry and Stumpy talk good sense. You better listen. Well, I'm not going, do you hear? <laughs> Who ever heard of going to the doc for a headache? Especially me, a ranger. Let him be, fellas. Yeah, you can't tell Brad anything. He's too bullheaded. The only difference between him and a mule is that the mule isn't quite as stubborn. Brad, will you stop pacing the floor? I haven't slept a wink. Oh, I'm sorry, Sylvia, but I got one of my migraines again. Oh, I'm sorry I scolded you. Well, let's go into the bathroom. I'll put some hot packs on the back of your neck. Oh, thank you. Maybe that'll help. Oh, these things are terrible. Enough to drive a man out of his mind. Oh, that feels wonderful. Oh, I'm glad. But you know, you can't go around wearing a hot pack on the back of your neck the rest of your life. <laughs> I know. Oh, but that feels good. You know, I, I could go to sleep right now. Why don't you go Don't and... say it and don't let's have an argument. I'm not going to see the doc and that's final. All right, dear. Have your own way. I won't say another word. 
That's a good girl. I know one thing. Uh, what's that? I wouldn't suffer like you do from these migraine headaches for one minute more than I had to. Well, I don't suppose you would. But you're not an outdoor man. <laughs> I can just imagine what the doc would say when a big, husky man like me came through the door and complained that I had a headache. Hiya, Bill. Hello, pal. How was school today? Oh, fine. Say, here's a letter from Colonel Anders. Huh? It's on official stationery. Must be important. Uh, could be. I'll take a look at it. See what's up. Come on, man, give. Okay. I've got to begin flight training refresher courses for all the rangers. Have them catch up in their solo time. Then we're getting a new type small plane to fly up here. This is in connection with defense preparations. Hey, that sounds pretty good. Does the old man give any info on the new type plane? No. It'll be delivered in three weeks, though. Hot dog. Can I fly one? I don't see why not. You brush up on your technique and get some more solo hours in. Oh, I'll make like a bird until the birds give up. <laughs> okay, pal. Say, uh, Stumpy and Gray Wolf are out in the garage putting the trucks in top shape. Uh, go get them while I quick work out a training schedule for our rangers. On the double. a new kind of flying machine. Yeah, in three weeks, old-timer. Ah, and that good news. Most of us plenty rusty on flying. That won't keep on, Gray Wolf. We've got to establish regular flying programs from now on. All the men have to keep their hand in. Hey, that's good news. Uh, what is your plan for refresher course? Well, Gray Wolf, I want you to go out to the flying field and see that everything is in readiness to start classes next week. Going to have to use the classroom as well as the other facilities. Uh, I'd do as soon as we threw here. Fine. Uh, Stumpy, you'd better give the planes a thorough checking over. I sure will. I don't think I can go over eight planes by the first part of the week. We'll be out to help you as soon as we get the ball rolling. That'll be fine, Sonny. Them flying machines shouldn't need much attention, though. We've been keeping them up right along. Yeah, Stumpy's right. Well, just the same, I want them checked carefully. Remember... Some of the boys are pretty rusty. I don't want any accidents. Well, you have a strong point here, Mr. Jefferson. You said it. When the motor stops, that there plane ain't worth a nickel. That is, unless a feller can flap its wings like a bird. <laughs> <laughs> you soon get tired. Stumpy, <laughs> sometimes you kill me. Okay, fellas, let's get with it. I'm going to call the off-duty rangers in for a meeting. <laughs> Thank you, fellas. Next Monday, we're starting a refresher course for you fellas to take the rust out of your flying technique. And then we're going to put in some solo time. Hey, that's hey, right. Right. Good. This will prepare you for the new type small plane we're getting in three weeks. Small oh, plane? Oh, nice also, from now on, everyone will put in a certain number of hours each month. Now, I know some of you have been flying regular patrol. Uh, Brad, you're in that group. Yep. However, to get you ready for the new type plane, every man will have to attend classes and also take his solo time. It's amazing how we lose our technique over a period of time, and we also pick up some bad habits. Now, these factors may or may not be dangerous while flying our present aircraft, but they might prove fatal on the new plane. So... No one is excused. Is that understood? No, All, right, right, sir. Sir. We'll All right. You're dismissed. I'll see you bright and early Monday morning at the airfield. Now that you fellows have finished your classroom work, we can begin with your solo flights. Stumpy and Grey Wolf have our planes lined up and ready to go. All of you get out to the starting position on the runway. I'll talk with you by radio. 
Take off and fly a five-mile circle and land. I'll watch for any faults in your technique. We'll brush up on them in sessions to come. Art, you're first man on the totem pole. Steve, you're next. Henry, get me a pad of paper. I want to make a notation. Right you are. Brad, you're next. Hey, what's the matter with Brad? He's not taking off. I don't know. Better talk to him. Brad, why aren't you taking off? What's wrong? I, I got a migraine, Bill. I just came on. I... I, I, I can't take off right now. Well, stay where you are. We'll be right there. Gray Wolf, take over putting those fellas through their paces. Right. Henry and I are going to take Brad home. He's pretty sick right now. He doesn't look good. He need doctor. Yeah, but try and tell him that. Let's go, pal. Brad? Oh, miserable. When I get home, Sylvia will put hot packs on the back of my neck. That'll ease it. We'll get there as soon as we can. He'll sleep for a while now. Well, that'll help. I certainly wish he'd go see a doctor. So do I, Bill. It's like pulling teeth every time you try and talk about it. Yeah, I know. Well, we'll have to run along, Sylvia. Let me know if I can do anything. I will. Thanks for bringing him home. No, that's all right. Goodbye. Uh, Bill. Yeah? I wish you could find a way to make Brad see that he must get medical help. There is a way. There is? Oh, please try it. But I'm not sure it's the best way. I'll think it over. Oh, please do. You know, anything is better than this. He suffers so much. I can see that. I'll give the matter some serious thought and see what I can come up with. How'd the rest of the boys do, fellas? Oh, they do fine, Bill. You take rust off them in a hurry. Yep, they soared up into the blue just like eagles. Came down to roost pretty as you please. That's fine. Nice work. Hey, what's your idea to get Brad to go to the doctor? There's only one thing left to do now, pal. You aren't going to ground him, are you? Yes, I am. Now you get rough with him now, huh? He ain't going to cotton to being grounded if I know him. And what's more, he's going to get madder than a wet hen. Yeah, you can say that again. Brad's not only got a super stubborn, but he sure got a healthy temper to boot. My decision is made, fellas. Brad's brought this on himself. He has only himself to blame. Yeah, I know, but that guy likes to fly even better than birds do. Boy, this is really going to hit home. <laughs> Please come in. Thank you, Sylvia. I only take a minute of your time. Well, please sit down. Have you reached a decision about Brad? Yes. I'm going to ground him. Oh, no. I warned you that my idea wasn't the easiest approach to the problem, but I do think it's the only one. Well, I know, but... Well, he'll be deeply hurt, and, and he'll react violently. I know that. That's why I told you first. Because when he comes home, it's going to be rough on you. But as I see it, it's the only answer to wake him up. 
Unless you have a better solution. Well, no, Bill, I haven't. I'm sorry I acted shocked. It's just that I didn't think for a moment that it would come to this. Would you want me to let him fly in this condition? No. No, he might have an accident, or even worse, he might get killed. Right. That's the whole basis for my decision. If he won't think of anybody but himself, then we'll have to do it for him. Well, yes. Yes, you're right. He has only himself to blame. Well, thank you for letting me know ahead of time. I can sort of cushion myself when the storm comes home tonight. I hope it won't be that bad. Bill, sometimes I almost believe that Brad loves flying more than he loves me. He should have married an airplane. Ground me. That's what I said, Brad. You're grounded. But you... I... Boy, is he mad. There's my badge and credentials. I'd be ashamed to be a ranger after this. He not mean this, Bill. He angry and hurt. Also stubborn and hard-headed. Poor feller's really been down to blow. Yeah. He looked like Bill had hit him with a ball bat. I remember my father telling me when I was a boy that it hurt him more at times to punish me than it actually hurt me. That's the way I feel about Brad. But I had no alternative. When a bird gets his wings clipped, he can't fly. But the feathers grow back again after a while. Then he flies again and his pride is mended. <laughs> Brad, how could you do such a thing? Why not? If he thinks he can stop me from flying just because I have headaches, he's got another thing coming. I'll show oh, him. Oh, yes, you'll show him. You've quit your job and now you're spunking up like a spanked child. Now, listen here. I'm sorry I didn't mean to shout at you. I've sure made a mess out of things. Yes, you have. I'm sorry I can't side with my own husband at a time like this. But when you're wrong, you're wrong. You're right. But what good will it do me to go back now? You won't let me fly anyhow. And you know that's what I live for. If I were you, I'd have a talk with Bill. You'll find him a very understanding man. Other people have found him out, so... Perhaps I will. I don't know yet. I'm going for a walk. Well, that's one good way to let off steam. Yeah. Yeah, and to think clearly, too. How about a fast mile or two walk before we turn in, pal? Sure. I'd say you've got Brad pretty much on your mind. Right. I don't like to see a man get as angry as he did. Well, you couldn't help it. It's his own fault. I know. This is one of the penalties of being the boss. Hey, somebody's walking toward us. He looks familiar. Yeah, he sure does, pal. Brad! Brad. <laughs> oh, B Bill, Henry. We're out doing our daily dozen before turning in. Well, I've been walking to think. Bill, I... I want to apologize for what I said and did today. And, well, if it's not too late, I, I'd like to have my job back. Your badge and credentials are on my desk. They must have fallen out of your pocket. Oh, thanks, Bill. You're a right guy. Thanks a lot. And now I think I'll go home and get some sleep. Good night, Brad. Ah, looks like everything's working out fine, doesn't it? Yes. Thank the Lord. Well, my young friend, what do you say we head for home and hit the hay? I'm ready to turn in now. Uh, me too. It's been a rough day. Not as rough on us as it's been on Brad and his wife. Bill? Yeah? 
is Brad still grounded? He sure is. Just like a ten-ton tank. Hey, guess what? Oh, it's you, Henry. I thought you was an overgrown rabbit the way you bounced in here. Oh, you'd bounce too if you saw what I've seen. How'd you find out the new planes are here, Henry? Oh, I have my secret servant agents. Keeping around, looking around, keeping their eye on things. <laughs> you sure have. How do you like them? Oh, keen, man, keen. Boy, they're really sharp looking and built for speed. How'd you like to go up with me this afternoon? <laughs> How would a rabbit like a sack of carrots? Let's go. <laughs> Too bad you weren't born a bird, young feller. Nah, birds fly too slow nowadays. How do you like it? Oh, wonderful. What an engine, and she sure handles like a breeze. Oh, that's too fast for force patrol work. Not on your life. Watch. I'll change the pitch of the prop blades. We'll crawl right over the treetops. Boy, oh, this is almost like a helicopter. Right. This is two planes in one. Speed and maneuverability when you need it. Yet you can rev down to a crawl and land on a dime. Sure is neat, all right. When can I fly it? After you've gone to school with the rest of the boys. When's school start? Tomorrow. It'll only take a couple hours of instruction, and then you can solo. How wonderful. I can hardly wait. I see Brad's here. He can attend all the school he wants to. In fact, I think he's smart to do it. Then he's right up to date after he gets his headaches fixed up. New plane's ready to go, Bill. First one warming up on ramp now. Thanks, Gray Wolf. Uh, Hank, how about you taking first crack at the new plane? Oh, I'd be glad to, Bill. Hey, who's in a plane? Brad. Where's Brad? Hey, that Brad all right. Now you know why he went to school. That crazy fool? I'll see if I can talk some sense into his thick head. Brad, can you hear me? Loud and clear, Bill. Circle the field and land right now. That's an order. Sorry, boss. Neither you nor Sylvia can stop me now. I'm going to show all of you that I can fly. You'd better fly to the North Pole because you're guilty of insubordination and stealing government property. <laughs> Threats won't get you nowhere now, Chief. I'm going to have my fling and pay for it later. Brad, don't be a fool. Is he up there? Sylvia, where did you come from? Oh, I got suspicious. Brad's been acting too calm about this whole thing. I knew he was up to something, but I caught on too late. See if you can talk some sense into that husband of yours. Well, I'll try. Brad, Brad, please come down. Not on your life. I'm free as a bird as long as the gas holds out. Please come down for my sake. No use arguing with me. Watch this dive over the field. Here he comes! He's not pulling out. I hope crash if he doesn't pull out. Brad, pull out! Brad, do you hear me? Have you got rocks in your head, mister? You almost gave us all heart failure. What's the matter with you? I'm blind. Here, I'm blind. I can't see a thing. He's got a migraine, the worst he's ever had. Oh, brother. How's he going to land? Brad, you're climbing now. Level off. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you. Am I level? Not quite. Forward on the stick a little. 
Yeah, that's fine. Now hold the stick right there. I will. How can I land? How can I land? I'm blind, you hear? Keep calm and don't panic. I'm taking another plane up and I'll fly behind you and guide you in. I'm on my way now. I hope it works. I don't want to die yet. Hurry up, please. Grey Wolf, keep talking to him. I'm going up. Oh, I hope it works. I hope Bill can bring him in. Take it easy, young lady. Bill will bring him in if it's at all possible. Brad, you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I hear you, Grey Wolf. Where's Bill? He climbed now. He'll soon be behind you. You not move, stick. Brad, I'm coming in behind you now. I'm going to stay 500 feet above and in back. Ease into a right-hand turn. Slowly now. Okay. I'll move the stick slowly. You're doing all right. Rev your engine down. Rev it down and hold the turn. How's that? Yeah, he's doing okay. Fine. Now pull out of the turn and do it slowly. You'll come right over the runway. I'm moving in closer above you. Don't panic. Uh, look like he make it. Begin your final approach. Begin your final approach. Easy now. I do it. I still can't see a thing. Keep calm, Brad. Keep calm. Pull up. You're nosing in too much. Pull up. Easy. Level to the left. Level to the port. Quick. That's it. You're almost down. You'll touch in a few seconds. Forward stick a little. Cut your engine. I'm circling up. Do you hear me, Brad? Yeah. Yeah, I hear you, Bill. Oh, you're a right guy, mister. Don't let anyone tell you you're different. Oh, I think I'd like to sit down. What's the diagnosis, doctor? He'll be all right. Blindness is only temporary. And if Brad will cooperate, I'm sure we can fix up those headaches. They're probably dietetic. Allergy to certain foods, huh? Yes, uh, we'll have to make tests. Well, is that all I have to go through? I thought you'd have to turn my head inside out. (laughs) Maybe that wouldn't be such a bad idea. (laughs) Uh, It won't be necessary now, Bill. I've got all the stubbornness out. Come to my senses. I don't know what to say, Bill, except... Thanks. A million thanks for saving my life. I'll do what the doc says now. <laughs> I'm ready to take my punishment like a man. You've had enough punishment already, Brad. Besides, we're getting rid of one big headache, and I sure don't want to start another. <laughs> They say all's well that ends well. And I guess that's true. Only sometimes it's hard on everyone's blood pressure and nerves. Stubbornness and anger almost cost Brad his life. Don't you be so foolish. See you next week for more adventure with... Ranger Bill! (laughs) 